Today, we are going to talk about augmented reality. I am with Robert. Robert, can you tell me two words about you? Yeah, thank you very much for having me for today's session. Uh, my name is Robert. I'm uh, a researcher here at Grenoble Ecole Management, and I'm with the consumer behavior team. So my uh, research interests are in studying the mechanisms, motivations, decision makings of consumers. And I'm particularly interested in uh, sustainability related issues and also digital devices. And today I'm going to talk about a topic that uh, connects these two subtopics. Okay. And what is uh, augmented reality? Augmented reality is perhaps something that uh, you've already used uh, on your smartphone, on a tablet, or maybe your Google Glasses. So uh, what happens is on the image on your device, uh, these are being overlaid with uh, virtual elements. So Pokemon Go is a classical example and one of the first applications where people were hunting for Pokemon Go's by pointing their devices at the real world. And on the screen, uh, you could see these uh, Pokemon Go. And uh, this was a toy. And the research I'm going to present today is uh, us presenting or transforming these toys into tools. Thank you, Robert. What did you do exactly? Well, the idea of our research was to test whether the augmented reality technology can also be used by customers in shops at the point of sale uh, to make better decision or to obtain product information. So if you look at a regular product packaging like this, uh, firms are struggling uh, with the problem that the space is limited. Using a digital device, um, consumers can scan the product and overlay the packaging with additional information on sustainability related uh, uh, information about the product, just to give you an example and make the decision accordingly. For this research, we had one um, augmented reality being programmed specifically for this type of research and we tested it in a field study in supermarkets and also here in the fashion store of Gem Labs. Very interesting, Robert. Thank you. What is the main contribution of the BizLab for your research? So for our research, uh, the BizLab helped us to provide some nuances and confirm the evidence that we've obtained in the field. So uh, we've collected data in uh, supermarkets and what we did in these studies, we've manipulated uh, the detailedness of the information that was being shown to participants in the augmented reality app, as well as whether this information was controllable or not. What we noticed in uh, these studies that uh, the question of whether people were in a rush hour, so whether many people, many other customers were present and whether people were rushed like at specific times you know, when you have to uh, do your shopping after work or at uh, Saturdays very early. This is a classical rush hour. So we observed that uh, these augmented reality apps uh, backfire under these times. And then we went to the lab to study these rush hour effects uh, um, in a more rigorous and very controlled fashion. So in our study here in uh, Gem Labs, we had two conditions. Uh, we asked participants to uh, translate information that is being shown on a label, label like this. The information was being presented in a language that most of the customers or most of our participants do not know, in fact, in German language. And uh, the participants used the Google Translator app, which uh, overlays uh, the information on the label with uh, the translated message. Um, we had two conditions. In one condition, we had one group, uh, people were uh, randomly assigned to these two groups. In one group, uh, they could do the translation and their shopping in a very usual fashion. In the other condition, we put these people under stress in a rush hour, if you want so. So there were push-up notifications here telling them other customers uh, want to look at the, at the product as well, hurry up, so on and so forth. Uh, what we observed here is that uh, these rush hour the condition of uh, rush hour had a negative effect, especially for those people who perceived the information on the label to be uh, very comprehensive. This was much less of a problem if uh, this information was perceived to be less comprehensive. So in this way, we provided uh, one new dimension or layer to our evidence we've obtained in the field. Thank you for your explanation, Robert. As you can see, the fashion store here at Gem Labs resembles a real fashion store. So this allows researchers to collect data in a realistic environment, which is also very controlled. 